Disclaimer. History is not safe for work, and neither is historical. This podcast is uncensored and contains explicit language. to historical my name is david and as always i am joined by jason and michael greetings also greetings <laughs> we here at historical we like to take a funny look at stuff through history sometimes people sometimes events today it's part two part two part two part of napoleon bonaparte napoleone bonaparte or oh, i can't remember how Just to pronounce it. whatever, whatever. <laughs> his italian name doesn't matter anymore he's no longer corsican oh. in his mind Corsican, that's right. Yeah. He wears a Corsican. What? That's a corset. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> My lord. My lord. Oh, that's a fine Corsican you got, though, you're wearing there. Enough with this. That gun's looking tasty. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Looks like a prime rib. <laughs> yum, yum. <laughs> gun, gun. So he left Napoleon in 1802. <clears throat> he had just become dictator for life. <laughs> you know. The number four. L-Y, heavy. <laughs> He'd beaten Austria a couple of times already, <laughs> kicked Prussia's ass. Was still, well, there, actually, currently, there is peace in Europe because he just kicked Austria's ass again out of uh, Italian states. Forced peace. <laughs> and Britain was finally like, all right, we'll, we'll stop attacking you. <laughs> so for a couple years, no, no, not for a couple years. It was probably like 12 months. There was peace in uh, Europe. And uh, during that peace... The dictator for life uh, decided to uh, start making some changes in France to sort of... Uh, There's a new dictator for life in town. <laughs> We're going to change things up. Sort of uh, go hand in hand with the revolution that propped him up to power. So he started investing in schools and, you know, road construction. <laughs> uh, created the civil code, which is the basis for modern day French law as well. And actually affected uh, most of the rest of Europe's civic upbringing. Upbringing, I don't know why I said that. But anywho, uh, because he conquered damn near all of, you know, most of Europe. And was instilling his law upon everyone. So they, once he got kicked out, they were like, well, you had some good points. So we're going to keep that in our uh, law books. Into the law book it stays. It's <laughs> often the case. Yeah. The book of laws. You know, use what works. Throw out. Wait, throw out what doesn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, throw up what doesn't. <laughs> Purge it. <laughs> Treat your body like a law book. <laughs> <laughs> and also. Only keep the good laws. While he was, uh, you know, able to turn his back on what was going on in Europe at the time because everyone was sort of chilling, uh, he started looking <laughs> yeah. over uh, France's colonies and just pretty much they all went to shit <laughs> haiti had a slave couple slave revolts uh every tuesday he lost uh some and then he sold to thomas jefferson louisiana louisiana purchase louisiana yeah. purchase <laughs> well he's just like saying like yeah, i was like he thomas lost jefferson he sold he the land <laughs> thomas jefferson purchase. beat him in a duel and took it from his hands <laughs> well it's funny too because france didn't really own a lot of the land it was mostly occupied by indians at the time mm -hmm. so it was an, and he sold it for 15 million but uh it was i guess the total land mass was under the perceived notion that you were going to take that land from the Indians. So that's why it, it was so big, even though France didn't really control that much of it. Oh. Oh. You had the huh. right to take that land from the Indians. Sorry, Native Americans. <laughs> uh, blame Napoleon. We keep stealing your land. In May of 1803, Britain declared war on France again because they just couldn't stand it. You know, <laughs> being at peace with France. Yeah, it's like it's, one of those like love hate relationships. It's like it's the passion's only truly there when we're fighting. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's like a girlfriend picking a fight. <clears throat> it's, just yeah. it's like I need some drama. I like when you get. I like when you're angry. 
The makeup whore. <laughs> yeah, the makeup whore is so great, dude. <laughs> when those cannons balls start flying, you're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> the leaders of both countries are just... But it was sort of... <laughs> while they declared war, it was sort of a stalemate because Britain didn't want to send land troops and France didn't land have troops. a fucking navy to talk of against the British navy, you know, the greatest in the world. So... They sort of just sat there and looked at each other menacingly. It's like, you've, are you going to do it first? We going to do it first? We don't know. Huh? Flirting with war, you know, how, how the French and English do. Uh, in 1804, he had become so popular, he re- another constitution was made, which uh, after a few edits also proclaimed him emperor. <laughs> Of the French Empire. We're going to cross this out here, do this, and I'm emperor. (laughs) And everyone agreed with it. Like 3.6 million people voted for it. 99% were like, yeah! They voted for emperor. (laughs) Are those numbers accurate? 12, wait, who knows? Napoleon punched those numbers too, you know? Yeah. It's like, yeah, see, I'm emperor now, and look, 99% of people support it. Right? Where'd you get those That's how elections go in North Korea also. Yeah, Yeah, right? Yeah. Kim Jong Un has a good approval rating. <laughs> is it ill or is it? So in, it was December second. Ill was his dad. And yeah, dead. I think I thought you just said ill, and I was like, which one? Doesn't matter. Ninety nine percent of people approve, whichever Kim Jong is there. December second, he invited the Pope to town. Uh, hey Pope. Uh, pope Pius the seventh. Pope Pius. Uh. Came into town because he wanted to make sh- you know make sure it looked all regal and legitimate and shit. When compared to all the other monarchies of Europe, you know they all had religious shit celebrations around their coronation. So he was like, "Yeah, well, let's get the biggest guy in town." So he, he brought the pope in. Uh, he crowned himself. You know, he put the crown on himself. Yeah, he just like takes it off the tables. <laughs> well, he, no, he took it from the Pope's hand and put it. Well, he held, he was already wearing a laurel because he wanted to uh, remind people of ancient Rome. So he's already wearing a golden laurel. So he just sort of held the crown above his head, like, yeah, I'm king. <laughs> he's got like ten crowns <laughs> this is on top of each other. <laughs> and Heavy is the head that lasts. <laughs> the crowns, all the crowns. <laughs> <laughs> Punk. Ah! <laughs> well, then he. Uh, Oh, he sure. took that crown and gave it to Josephine, you know, and then you have the famous painting of him crowning Josephine, which is very sweet. Oh, even though she was. <laughs> well, never mind. We don't need to go there again. <laughs> this is the last episode. Where yeah, we, we, we don't need to go there. <laughs> Josephine the whole time. <laughs> we don't need to go there. We drag so, her through the mud. So don't come around historical's neighborhood. <laughs> don't you bring your wives? <laughs> yeah, even your wives aren't safe. <laughs> God, <laughs> this sounds really bad. <laughs> That's not really bad. What do you think, Lysenko? Like, we, mean, <laughs> we mean that figuratively. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> he's Emperor. Emperor Napoleon now. Yay. Uh, 1805 comes around. He's like, all right, we're going to do it. We're around. going to launch an attack against Britain. So, he started marshalling uh, troops around. Uh, he had 2,000 ships uh, ready to take on the Navy. He uh, gathered 200,000 men. And they sort of just sat there on the English Channel, just sort of watching them. <laughs> just watching the British. It was like, all right. Mowing the lawn, angrily staring. <laughs> Any day now. And then, the, you know, the British Navy's there, you know, sort of just standing off. Drinking tea, also staring. Yeah, right. <laughs> Those posh fuckers. Uh, so <laughs> he eventually decides that he doesn't have enough ships. Because, you know, British Navy, as we said, more, best in the world. And he wants, he needs more, more. And also to, <laughs> to one, be able to Ships. counteract their Navy, but also transport his troops across. Because, you know, 200,000 men, you're going to need a fuck ton of boats. <laughs> but my math. Yes. So, and not to mention all the artillery he would bring with him and all That's the sweet. supplies and shit. Sweet artillery. So what he does is he decides to take his army and move in to Europe. And because of the way he pushed his troops uh, maneuvering, he was in Austria in like six or seven weeks and just started fucking shit up for the Austrian Empire. Because, you know, 
France and Austria past 50 years. Why not go to war? If France isn't fighting England, they're like, well, Austria's easy pickings. Well, they don't get along with anybody. Yeah. It's like, we'll be back for you later, England. So, hey, Austria. <laughs> it's like, oh, no, they're back. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> man. It's like a d- drunk French like showing back f- up like, dun, dun, dun. Hey. <laughs> Seems like the French are just like the school bully. <laughs> yeah, right. It's just like kind of picking a fight. <laughs> like, what are you looking at? Four eyes. And then they like, like holds a fist, you know, and it's just like, hey, man, just walk into it, bro. <laughs> just <laughs> walk into it. Why are you punching yourself? Yeah. <laughs> so at this point, you had a coalition of Britain, Prussia, Austria and Russia. And by the time he got to Vienna, the only troops there were Austrian and Prussian. Great sausages there. Uh, The Russians were on the way. Or it was just Austria there. The Prussians and Russians were on their way. And Napoleon's (laughs) thought was... They were rushing over. (laughs) Yeah. Dude, that gun is... (laughs) uh, Seriously. That one hurt me. (laughs) Physically. Uh, So... You know, his thought was, well, I best not let them combine forces, so I'll take one one out now. And- they best not combine forces. Yeah. All right. <laughs> oh, hell no. <laughs> uh-uh. <laughs> you best not be combining no forces now, day. Napoleon's got a uh, sass. Yeah, right. He was very sassy. <laughs> it was in the law book. <laughs> nah, em- girl. Emperor sassy pants. <laughs> so you have Emperor sassy Napoleon, pants. girl. <laughs> Uh, Did you say Emperor's sassy pants? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. You have the Battle of Austerlitz, <laughs> where Napoleon was Austerlitz. outside of the town of Austerlitz, and there was this uh, hill called the Prasden Heights where he had fortified, but then the troop, the Austrian troops there in the town uh, wanted to take the hill, obviously, high ground, wanting the high ground. Yeah. Don't look at me. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so, uh, Napoleon was outnumbered at the time. So he retreated from the hill, and the Aust- or Austrians were like, well, shit, yeah. Took the hill. Yeah. Little, little did they know he had reinforcements coming from the south. Oh, God. And then they were sort of just hung around the bottom of the hill, <laughs> and then surprise attack, and then... Yeah, he won. Surprise attack. In his memoirs, he saw that coming. He, in his memoirs, he said it was the best battle of his life. <laughs> he, oh, it was, was good. peak Napoleon <laughs> with the Battle of Austerlitz. The Battle of Austerlitz. Yes. <laughs> it was great, sweet, beautiful, passionate it was, battle. So that's why you got to the king of the hill. That's why it's a thing. Right? <laughs> so Austrians <laughs> retreat. <laughs> uh, then, he, then the Prussians arrive. They have... We have arrived. 160,000 troops. Uh, it's a lot. By the end of it, they... <laughs> I think 140,000 are captured and 25,000 are killed. Well. Well. Prussians just got run over. Like, did they have any guns? Like, was it just 160,000 dudes? <laughs> well, he, this is... Peak, Maybe this will make it be intimidating. <laughs> well, this is peak Napoleon. He's like... Peak Napoleon. M- maneuvering his troops around in weird and Floyd innovative <laughs> ways. <laughs> Uh, he's using his cannons like no one's ever seen before. Hair blowing in the wind. He's shooting <laughs> cannons out of cannons. <laughs> like, how is he doing it? <laughs> what is the <this> sorcery? <laughs> how do, what do you mean he was using cannons? Like, what does that even mean? Well, it, because he, <laughs> he's dispersed his entire uh, artillery amongst each division. So mm-hmm. he has, like, cannons all over the place, and each division sort of... Uh, can act independently of each other. So they're maneuvering around because... There's just cannons all over the yeah. place. Yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah. in the trees. Decentralized <laughs> cannon. <laughs> yeah. Oh, speaking of decentralized, he did uh, make the Bank of France also. Um, what is that, a centralized bank? Or? Yes. Okay. So you're saying... But are there cannons? <laughs> yes. At the bank, yes. Uh, they were posted on the roof. <laughs> Elite cannon sniper. <laughs> <laughs> He could hit it. <laughs> you see the red light. It's a little less subtle, but you know what? Effective. <laughs> Fire! <laughs> Be like that shootout scene in Heat. Except, you know, they have machine guns. It's always see, like the people that have shootout cannons. scene in Heat. 
<laughs> That's why the cops were so outmatched. That shoot I've seen in heat is that applicable to like anything in life. It's like any, a, any of these wars in Europe over the the centuries. Even from w- wars in Europe to ordering a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> so he kicked Prussia's ass. Uh, now the only standing army he left. the shit out of Prussia. It was a great Blo- shootout. Bloody scene. on the ground, <laughs> face bleeding, black eye. Uh, <laughs> but he's not, his head out of the ground. he's not dead. Yeah. Right. He's just like. Spits out a tooth. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just lost a lot of, lot of land. Um, got his arm cut off. <laughs> now the only standing army against Napoleon right now is the Russians. The so school he, principal afraid to jump in here. <laughs> yeah, he's like, damn. He eats a lot of croissants. He's our star, <laughs> our star running back. So the. He's, he's short. Is Napoleon? Come on. Here yeah. comes the sassy <laughs> pants. <laughs> Napoleon's probably running back height. I feel like you know. Uh, <laughs> could have been one. So. <laughs> I think I think if the NFL existed in early 1800s France, he could have been a instead of dictator. He's either dictator or running back. Running back. (laughs) They call him the cannon. (laughs) 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 He just shoots through the offensive line. No one can see him coming. (laughs) So he continues to move towards Russia because they're the only army left Uh opposing him. Uh, Is there anyone left? (laughs) 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 Who wants some now? (laughs) Just holding the torch above the cannon like... (laughs) Uh, So (laughs) so he gets to uh, Poland. and Sorry, uh, Poland. (laughs) They're like, we don't want no part of this. Our only crime was just being here. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, gets to Poland. They have a few fights. uh, (laughs) French and Russians. Punch. And then Alexander the first. <laughs> the Polos are just out of there. Yeah. <laughs> Alexander not, the they're first. They're like fighting in the kitchen. Like, stop it! <laughs> well, the, well, the Poles are helping the French because, you know, Polish people hate Russia. Yeah. So, but Alexander the first is like... Oh, and too, the Polish people, like, come on, you know, it's just like, there's no reason to fight Napoleon. Like, he's just watching what he just did to, like, everybody <laughs> Like, you were all the way over there, and now you're here, so... <laughs> it's just like, let's just... In a matter of months, let's so... Let's work yeah, with he, them. <laughs> yeah. So... A kibasa croissant, the accords. <laughs> <laughs> the croissant accords. Tsar Alexander I was like, okay, let's... This isn't going to work for anyone. So he, he comes, you know, agrees to a peace treaty with uh, Napoleon, where when they first meet... The first thing out of Alexander's mouth are, hey, look, I hate Great Britain, too. So Napoleon was like, all right, I could work with that. Yeah, that's all you had to say. <laughs> <laughs> you had me. At, I hate Great Britain. <laughs> <laughs> they passionately make it love. <laughs> so now, now Napoleon's only real enemy. You had me. And I hate Great Britain. <laughs> <laughs> so his only real enemy now is Great Britain. <laughs> he implemented this uh, Here the torch that lights the stratagem <laughs> throughout the continent of no one could trade with England. No trade with them. Trade embargoes all around. You could not trade with Britain. No tradesies. Because <laughs> <laughs> if he wasn't going to attack them, he was going to strangle them economically. Because <laughs> you know why not? Yeah, and that's, just that's have a pretty, all of this influence and power just and that's a pretty up and pretty like, fucking inventive idea for the time <laughs> when most people were just you know well kill them. <laughs> he's, we were just to kill. He's like a pioneer of economic sanctions. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> economic warfare. sanction. Sanction me with your army. <laughs> <laughs> economic sanctions. So by Napoleon <laughs> Bonaparte. He returns to Paris, uh, July of 1807, and people are going nuts for this guy. He is a rock star. Just conquered most of Europe. All the Women great- just flashing him. <laughs> With their hairy armpits and all. Uh, so It's like Beatles mania. Yeah. <laughs> him and Josephine are he has the, getting the, along. He has the haircut. <laughs> all the Beatles guys. <laughs> no, he, he's not a haircut. <laughs> Well, they wouldn't see it because he's wearing the hat. Oh, that's true. Wow. The hat adds like five inches <laughs> or more. <laughs> so, in 1808, he decides to punish Portugal. What did we do? <laughs> <laughs> they were trading with Britain. Oh, shit. <laughs> he shows up. I recall saying, 
no trades <laughs> quite loudly <laughs> on the playground. <laughs> yeah, he just catches yeah on the playground, right? Sounds like you didn't hear me, Portugal. <laughs> so he takes Portugal a- and Britain were just caught. He catches them in the like corner, like a lollipop, like under the slide. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> takes a couple hundred thousand troops down through Spain to Portugal, uh, and the Spanish don't care for that at all. I'm like, hey, excuse me, <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing there? Uh, we're gonna punish Portugal. <laughs> He actually instills his brother Joseph as the king of Spain, which he was doing for a lot of his <laughs> like, family members. He was naming brothers and sisters to all sorts of thrones. Hey, what you want to be king of? Uh, he, he Spain's m- like, hey, what the fuck? He's like, uh-uh. <laughs> yeah, here's your new king. It's yeah. my brother, Joe. <laughs> uh, no, no complaining. King Joe. Shh. <laughs> what, <laughs> one of his brothers became the <laughs> king of Holland. Sweet summer child. A lot of his sisters became duchesses and whatnot. Um, Spain, obviously, not kosher with any of that. Uh, madre. <laughs> revolted. And it was the longest engagement he had while he was emperor because he had troops tied up in the Iberian Peninsula for six years while he was mucking about in the rest of Europe. He was still always, he was always fighting in Spain. He said, we're going to punish Portugal. I'm going to fuck another. <laughs> Well, while he was, <laughs> but while that engagement was going on, he started thinking about his start shaking Morocco. his legacy. <laughs> started thinking about his legacy and who he was who was going to take over after he died. And Josephine wasn't childbearing; like she wasn't popping out any kids. So he's like, "Sorry, baby, got to end this." Into the cannon. <laughs> Divorced her. She was forty six. Uh, <laughs> yeah, poor woman. <laughs> Her life is over. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, (laughs) Sorry, ladies. And then he married into the Habsburg family. Of course he did. The uh, rulers of Austria. Who he just kicked their ass. Uh, Austrians were... (laughs) And he wants to have my babies. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Austria would would have liked to have gone back to war with him. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) But Napoleon's just like, no. Well, well, he had uh, one of... arms like in a cast, you know, and he's just like, just healing for the last... Like, come on! (laughs) One of King Francis's, uh, or Emperor Francis, I can't remember. Well, it's the Empire, yeah. So Emperor Francis I, one of his um, uh, fucking assistant people... uh, Fucking assistant people? Yeah. (laughs) Uh, One of his top aides was saying, hey... Maybe we shouldn't go to war right now because we were just in one <laughs> and we ain't, we got our ass beat. So let's chill out for a while and maybe just have peace with France for a little bit. So the king agreed and sent his 19 year old daughter to Napoleon. <laughs> God. <laughs> Damn. Marie Louise, who hated Napoleon because most Austrian people did. <laughs> Damn. But when she met him, man, she swooned. The charisma. Yeah. The way he played that guitar. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Still the Beatles. <laughs> I'm sure it was a cello or something at this point. No, not cello, but the, the harp, cello. harp thing. Yeah, harpsichord. No. <laughs> a greasy <Giant> French horn. <laughs> it's a French horn. <laughs> That's not what a French horn sounds like. I don't give a like shit. At all. What does oh a French horn God. sound like then? Not like that. <laughs> it's okay. So we got know, that. I know that. That I am. Aware. Everyone, do your French horn impression now. <laughs> Send us your French horn impressions. <laughs> At no, but hole. just like there's something about French, like the French language. That's why it's like everyone's always like French, the romantic thing. Well, and, but he was speaking French with a Corsican accent. <laughs> so what's that sound like? Yeah, what's that sound? It's like? an Italian speaking French. <laughs> So that probably sounds like garbage. <laughs> yeah, so maybe, that or it's maybe the most you're... seductive fucking thing yeah, the, the world has ever heard. It's one or the other. And that's why I got so far. <laughs> yeah, he must have. Because like, as soon as someone heard his voice, especially when like I mean, the, the d- troops, I mean, like the they dude were. T- who just got his ass kicked. He like handed his daughter <laughs> over to him. Like this guy must have been a sweet talker. <laughs> yeah. You had me at give me your daughter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You don't have to say, say no more. <laughs> Uh, 1810, uh, April 2nd, they got married, and Napoleon got his wish because a year later, uh, his, a baby boy was born, uh, who would become Napoleon II. Born with the hat on. <laughs> <laughs> How, how'd your mama get that out? 
because it's full size already. Okay. Incl- the baby is too. He's like 14 years old. <laughs> 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 Napoleon two. <II. laughs> <laughs> My God. <laughs> uh, so it's an abomination. <laughs> then we get eighteen tw- in eighteen twelve. Rumors start coming. To Napoleon of someone else <laughs> trading with Britain. Uh oh. <laughs> and that would have been Tsar Alexander the first of Russia. And Napoleon wasn't pleased with that, so he invaded them. <laughs> <laughs> I am not pleased. <laughs> 600,000 men went into Russia. <laughs> what happened to you hating Great Britain? <laughs> this is I thought we had up. something. Yeah, for four years, they they uh, had an economic strangle on Great Britain, but it was costing Russia also because they ain't got dick supplies in Russia, so if they, they can't trade, supplies. <laughs> if they can't trade, then, you know, they're not doing that well either. It's cold and there's vodka. <laughs> That's all we have. <laughs> So he invades 600,000 men, very diverse army is French, Italian, uh, they had some Austrians in there, uh, some Polish people joined up, um, and, the, and the Russians keep just retreating whenever they find, or the French find Russia, they, they just keep moving back to the battle of Borodino, which was one of the bloodiest conflict conflicts to Napoleon participated in, uh, Cause, oh yeah, because Russia's just uh, they fight dirty. Yeah, dirty. Yeah, yeah. Snow, fighting in the snow. So he yeah. he takes Moscow, and when he gets to Moscow, he's like, okay, they'll they'll sue for peace now. This is you know one of their major cities. Yeah, uh, but he, sue for peace. <laughs> but he finds it abandoned, like no one's there. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, uh, joke on you. <laughs> well, this is kind of creepy. <laughs> There's just like a door just slowly swinging. <laughs> a deer runs across the road. <laughs> Sn- snow falls off one of the uh, the onion things very menacingly. And then the city... The onion things, yes. The, the city yeah. catches on fire. Yeah, I don't know what you mean about the onion things, but He's I do know what you mean the about the bulbous Yeah, the towers. spirals. <laughs> the onion thing. Yeah. The onion things. <laughs> yeah. You could have described that a little better. I can't like... Come on, it's architectural. I, I figured out what you meant. That's the yeah, that's the correct but architectural I did not know what you for meant. onion. The, the thing. onion thing. I want to go to Moscow, mother, and see the onion thing. <laughs> <laughs> we got the onion things at home, son. Uh, so <laughs> we have onion things at home, son. <laughs> the city uh, catches on fire. We have your Kremlin Legos. <laughs> city catches on fire, and Napoleon's like, "Well, who who did that?" <laughs> <laughs> Russia. <Oops. laughs> Russians burned down Moscow because they didn't want Napoleon there. Because they're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we don't want you in our land, so we're not going to let you sleep in our houses, so we're just going to burn them down. So I was like, Russia burned Moscow down more times themselves than like, <laughs> other <Yeah>. people. <laughs> or he's playing to. So he's just like... <laughs> Moscow's like, come on. Well, this is kind of crazy. Uh, and starts communicating with Alexander's like, do you want to have a peace now or something? Like, cause he's like on the phone, like, yo, you, Moscow's on fire. <laughs> y'all are, y'all are acting kind of kooky <laughs> for, even for me. <laughs> yeah. Like this is, this is a little strange. And Russia was just like, eh, no, we're fine. <laughs> we're cool. Oh, okay. It's like when you're just like, what's wrong? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Moscow's on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Just burn down our capital. It's like, Whatever. uh, but Moscow's on fire. It's just like, it's fine. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's so fine. Cool. It's, it's like, but don't you live there? I used to. <laughs> <laughs> don't anymore. So he waits for about five we weeks care about that. <laughs> uh, for a response, and then it's like, okay, I'm leaving. Uh, and then leaves. It's just like, <laughs> I'm getting the fuck out. The Russians just, sk- like, we're too weird for Napoleon. Yeah. He's just like, uh. <laughs> Their army, like, scorched earth policy was not his forte. <laughs> He's just like, okay. There was nothing here to begin with, and then you just burned the few things over here. Right. He's like, I'm a, I like conquering. I don't like, you know, just... I need something to conquer. There's <laughs> nothing here. <laughs> he burned it. I don't like just total annihilation. <laughs> <laughs> so, of the 600,000, on the way back, the first, within the first month, uh, 150,000 are dead from starvation and freezing. Uh, shit <laughs> uh, and it just keeps going that way as he's marching back mother Russia <laughs> no one beats her N- only 93,000 people survive Jesus Christ yeah 
And Napoleon didn't even finish the trip with him because by the time they started getting back to the border with Poland, he started getting word that there was a coup happening in France. So he's like, fuck no. And uh, he took a plane, (laughs) took a sled home real fast. Good thing it was all the way downhill. (laughs) They're all the countries. (laughs) Sorry, I'm going to go to this. All all the low countries. Uh Uh, So he gets back to, to France. Uh, Y'all ain't cooing, are you? Yeah, settles everything. But then... Bloodless coup. <laughs> you have another coalition of people come together. Russia. Some Prussians. Yeah, Russia's like, yo, his whole army died. <laughs> Sweet, Sweden and uh, Great Britain all come together. Uh, but... Austria stayed out of it because, obviously, the daughter is Empress of France. So like, Shit, really this is like the first time they, they didn't go to war with, with France. They're like, okay, we'll stay out of it. But so... Scratch your chest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> stay out of it. Uh, uh, we'll stay out of this. Uh, and also they... because they saw language for we'll stay out of this. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Pick up a stay. But... Uh, because they also saw the upheaval happening in France. Like... People weren't happy. Some, you had a potential coup almost happened. So, potential this, coup. This group of countries decided, well, now is the time. The time is now. Uh, January <laughs> the time is now. 25th, 1814. That's the time. <laughs> uh, Napoleon sees his wife for the last time, says goodbye as he's starting to move out uh, for a campaign against uh, the forces allied against him. Yep, gonna go fight a world war, baby. <laughs> I'll be back. Well, I might see you later. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, doesn't go well. <laughs> uh, they, at the Battle of Leipzig, was f- one of his first major defeats. And he had been defeated before, but this one was like, oh, okay, well, he can fucking get him now. <laughs> like, the beast bleeds. <laughs> It's like in the boxing thing. He finally stuns him. It's like, oh my god! <laughs> Brought him to the to the mat. The first time in his career, he's been dropped. <laughs> so they move in, uh, and he's forced to abdicate the throne. Uh, April twelfth. So they take him prisoner, and exile him to the island of Elba, which is off the coast of Corsica. So he can, you know, look at his home while he's in prison for the rest of his life. <laughs> But while there, he sort of kind of sweet. They were, they were sort of nice to him because they let him pretty much run the island. Like they were like, okay, <laughs> well, you, you. We let him pretend he's still emperor. They, yeah, this, yeah <laughs> he he started calling himself the emperor of Elba and shit. Uh, had a garrison there that he trained and you know started implementing law on on the island. <laughs> but was only there for uh, ten months because. While he was away in France, they instilled uh, Louis the Eighteenth of the Bourbons back on the throne. They were drunk as shit. And France and Louis had been not getting along that well lately. Oh yeah. So he's he was uh, exiled for about ten months before him and uh, some troops decided to just skip town. Uh, they got off Elba, arrived back in France. Didn't Lizzie plan? Yeah, it's just about to say. <laughs> the boys are back in town. <laughs> yeah. So uh, he's he's an outlaw. Like, yeah, you had a, a council in Vienna form because they were just trying to put the pieces of Europe back together. They were like, what? what? I got the puzzle. Yeah, what, 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 what the what? fuck were we doing here <laughs> before this madman came through? This tornado. Uh, of sexual energy. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard this man talk? So don't let him get in here, shot. <laughs> He'll convince you of anything. <laughs> uh, it's like a quiet place, but you just have to cover your ears or whatever the fuck. He, bird box. <laughs> <laughs> he gets back, uh, and his former troops find him, and he sort of surrenders because he has a few people with him. But he walks forward alone, and it's like, "Hey, I'm your emperor, but if you got to kill me, you can go ahead and do it right now." And everyone's just like. Starts cheering, Viva la Emperor, you know. Gets the troops right back. They love him. Yeah, of course. Because he spoke. 
Because that voice. Yeah. So he takes Paris back. Uh, Louis the Eighteenth gets the fuck out of Dodge. <laughs> He's like, nah, I don't want any of this. I saw this movie before. <laughs> I don't want no part of this shit. <laughs> I know my history. Oh, my family history. Uh, so he goes and uh, goes to Great Britain. Um, hey. <laughs> What's up? I'm not the king of France, so you shouldn't hate me right now. Uh, <laughs> right now. <laughs> Maybe later. It's like a, a in-division trade. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so you, Brett Favre went to the Vikings. <laughs> <laughs> and you have the, the... King of France goes to a different country. <laughs> you guys be king of France and be like, hey, England, what's up? Hey, can I come hang out with you guys? So you have the... Uh, can I play quarterback for you? <laughs> he's only emperor again for 100 days. So... But what a hundred days it was. It was. It was a whirlwind adventure. Um, he it's a summer road. Marshals, <laughs> marshals up troops again uh, throughout France. Gets like 85. Why do we keep finding all these people? <laughs> <laughs> gets like 85,000 people together. And you had British troops. It's me and 85,000, my closest friends. <laughs> coming to invade you. <laughs> uh, British and Prussian troops on the northern border of France. And Austrians and Russians on the way from the... Uh, east because Austria had it and it's like okay he's just gonna keep causing problems gotta put the dog down <laughs> load up the shotgun <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> time to take Napoleon out back <laughs> take him out behind the shed <laughs> don't care if we're related by marriage or not so take her behind the shed too <laughs> the Prussians were still on the way the English were fortified in around a, a little place called Waterloo where <sighs> So, uh, <laughs> Napoleon, it had been raining really hard the night before. It used to be called not Waterloo, but then it rained. <laughs> so, come the morning of July 18th, yeah, he wanted to attack, but it had rained a lot. So, he was waiting for yeah, it's wet. the ground to dry so he can move his cannons around. <laughs> 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 Live by the cannon, die by the cannon. <laughs> but it was sort of perilous uh, to wait because he was, the Prussians hadn't arrived yet, so he needed, and he was would have been outnumbered had they combined forces. So he needed to force the British to either retreat or just kill them all before the Prussians arrived. But, you know, he waited, like, instead of attacking, you know, at dawn or whatnot, he waited for the goddamn ground to dry. So it wasn't until, like, midday when the battle began. All right, let's move these cannons. So he started etching up, uh, fucking started shooting the cannons, but the British were in a position where they could just hide underneath or uh, along the uh, topography. Mm -hmm. Just keep up with their heads out. <laughs> yeah. Like, Over whack here, Napoleon. <laughs> <laughs> and Looks like you're messing with them cannons, eh? <laughs> yeah, they were just overshooting them. Uh, so Napoleon... <laughs> It's a big old pile over, of cannonballs behind them. <laughs> just keep putting them in there. Overthrowing his receivers. Yeah, and Napoleon, uh, because he had a, a great need to get this done quickly, he just full uh, frontal assault instead of you know doing his weird went for the hail mary game, game <laughs> play. frontal assault. Yeah, which they were dug in. It was pretty much neck and neck for about nine hours, and then the Prussians showed up, and Napoleon's like, "Well, shit." Yeah. <laughs> So they see like the one flag over the hill. Everyone stops, you know. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Look to the east. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so Prussian hey, showed up. You maggots. <laughs> uh, he tries to uh, rally his troops, but it's the the battle's lost and he is captured again. Uh, so you may be wondering how I got here. <laughs> s sends to is this your first time? Uh, sends to exile <laughs> again. Is this your first time? I don't think that's what he says. I think it's his first time. First time. Is this your first time being hung <laughs> by the neck to die? <laughs> being being exiled. Uh, so, <laughs> but uh, the British decided not to take any chances leaving him anywhere near Europe. So they sent him <laughs> to St. Helena, which is off the coast of Africa and they're like, why, in why the why don't we just Atlantic kill Ocean. Him? <laughs> why do we keep sending him places? <laughs> <laughs> like not close. <laughs> So I guess because it's like you don't want to kill somebody who's like I guess that level of it would have probably created riots in France, right? Yeah, you don't just execute people. Like well, I he just... could have instead they didn't. Where were they gonna go find him? He's on an island anyway. It's not like anyone was going to check to make sure he's still alive, right? And Napoleon, you there? People, people talk. 
Well, <laughs> oh, no. well, this, this would be this would be like the, the whispers. This time they they weren't just letting him run amok on the island. They had like two hundred thousand or two thousand guards. Two They didn't take any chances. <laughs> two thousand, two thousand like navy ships around. Like a moat. Well, there were two. Yeah. There were two ship. that there were <laughs> there were two ships that that made rounds. Uh, on the island to make sure he didn't, you know, occasionally just get shot away. a cannonball above his house and two thousand guards on the, you know, on the island, pretty much making sure he didn't do anything. Anytime they transport him, like in the armored van, there's like twenty of them. <laughs> <laughs> he was <laughs> like prisoner number one. He was forty six <laughs> when he uh, when he landed on Saint Helena, and he lived there for five and a half years before he died. And so uh, people think it was stomach cancer. Well, from all the uh, poison he was feeding himself <laughs> to Fire. develop the immunity in case anyone ever tried. Which was funny because he tried to kill himself twice <laughs> with poison. <laughs> after after he <laughs> after he lost the <laughs> You're like that's funny, hilarious. Yeah, after he lost uh, the first before he got exiled the first time, uh, he, he tried to take some poison, but it it was not of high quality. That Actually, Russian cyanide yeah, just right. gave him a buzz. <laughs> Bad trip, man. So yeah, <laughs> that expired Russian cyanide. That, <laughs> that is the life of Napoleon Bonaparte. Yeah, you know, it's like he did all this cool shit, and then he went to an island and died of stomach cancer. <laughs> Remember, no Basically, matter how big you get, at the end of the day, you'll just die of stomach cancer after uh, trying to poison. It's yourself. just such a great story though, because he gets exiled and then he comes back. Yeah, it's and like you thought that, are like, yeah, you thought it was over. Yeah, you thought this movie was over. <laughs> It's like the There's comeback. There's 45 more minutes left. Yeah. It, it was like when when David Lee Roth rejoined Van Halen. <laughs> it was just like you never thought it was going to happen. You never thought you'd see it again. But then dun, it was like. Dun, 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 dun. Napoleon comes yeah. back. Yeah. <laughs> Napoleon <Pan> loved <laughs> hair metal. <laughs> Napoleon. <laughs> Waterloo. <laughs> where yeah, I'm and uh, next week we will delve into how Europe dealt with. With what just happened to them. <laughs> Interesting. With all of that yeah. stuff Napoleon violated. Yeah, Rush is like, do we really? It's like when you wake up the next morning, you're like, do we really burn our capital down? <laughs> 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 Fuck. <laughs> oh, man. Please delete those pictures on Facebook. <laughs> and they're like, just burning the capital. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, dude, why didn't anyone tell me? It's like, I don't know. Try to fucking those potato buildings, <laughs> the onion no, building, the onion, building. <laughs> the potato the building. onion spires. <laughs> I guess it's like if we're going with our high school analogy, it's like that the high school quarterback or running back or whatever he was, he was the cannon. <laughs> uh, he hit the cannon, the running back. He, uh, you know, ended up, you know, beating up somebody or doing going taking something a little too far. It was like the quiet kid. He got uh, <laughs> you don't fuck with. <laughs> he got sent to juvie, <laughs> and then he came back. And then got sent back to juvie again. <laughs> or he got sent to real jail. He like just turned 18. <laughs> and they're like, not this time, boy. <laughs> so you've done too many things. Yeah, We're trying just, you as an adult. <laughs> yeah, he went to real jail the second time. <laughs> so you can't just keep beating the shit out of all the kids in school on the plane. I am emperor of the playground. <laughs> this is mine. <laughs> yeah. Give me your girlfriend. <laughs> and yeah, it went, that was like, yeah, it went on a little too long. And then, and then yeah, he had died in prison. <laughs> of stomach cancer from eating too many ramen noodles <laughs> all, all right. that square pizza <laughs> 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 we're all gonna die of it all right so let's get to the shill stuff chill chill, chill. Just give chill. us five stars on itunes if you want five give us five croissants give us five waterloos <laughs> give us five exiled napoleons <laughs> i don't know I don't what know. who cares give us Just give us five something this is if you feel like it doesn't matter if you want to do two, feel free. Uh, follow us on the social media platforms, Instagram and Twitter. When they're there. <laughs> yeah, when we're not deactivated. Because we're too raw. Yeah, we like, like to an onion. We like to push. <laughs> we like to push buttons. Like there's spires in Russia. <laughs> On, onion things. Um, bulbous. <laughs> bulbous onion things with snow falling menacingly off of them. What, is, what a sentence that was. Go back and listen to it first. <laughs> it just what happened. a sentence. Yeah. That's an all-time classic. All right. That should be our tag. <laughs> word of mouth is the best advertising we can get. So just tell us people. Just, just, just tell, tell us people. 
<laughs> just tell people about us if you like it. Or or even if you tell, don't like tell it. Tell us about people. Who knows? Uh, or, you know, get a Twitter rage mob after us and get it, try and destroy our lives. That would be fun. Please. That would be a fun experience. Do I'd it. like to go through that. Dox us. You can email us at historical <laughs> at gmail.com with any questions you'd like us to answer. Um, you can leave comments on our shit. <laughs> um, you can call us FFs. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, Wait, we should be, my. We've been called that, apparently, on this past uh, <laughs> this past week. Somebody left on one of our YouTube videos. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, that's uh, cool. But they deleted that's it. That's cool. But they deleted it. Oh, See, here's cowards. the thing. It's exactly. You do, you we get, didn't delete it. So, hey, we didn't delete your comment, whoever. If you're going to leave homophobic slurs on our shit, at least, you know. Own it. Yeah. yeah. Don't delete it like a coward. Yeah. Come on. That's what like, I... Oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, anyway, so that was... Uh, just do that. You can do whatever you want. You know what? Leave mean comments and then delete them. <laughs> it's something. If it fills it's the, a start. If it fills the void in your life, we, we welcome it. The hole, if you will. Void. And you know what happens on the show when somebody does a terrible pun? They get shot. <laughs> you know what we call that? <laughs> Punishment. <laughs> Shoot yourself. No, no. <laughs> oh, that was disappointing. It was a blank. He planned it. Oh, no. <laughs> God didn't want it. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was going to shoot in the air. <laughs> no, he's going to. He was going to cap himself. All right. And our statement of modernity for this week is, uh, well, let's just go real, well with this one. Uh, you have nothing to fear but everything in existence. Au revoir. You know, spooky. Life is full of holes, enter wisely.